investing, as it is, it can be stressful. And in a cyclical industry like the mining industry, it could be, you know, very risky. And our emphasis tends to be on the risky part of a risky sector in terms of the junior mining industry. So we spend a lot of time to try and get it right. So apart from meeting with management, looking through or leafing through their PowerPoint presentations, looking at their technical reports, and looking at any geological papers that we could find on these kinds of deposits, the big confirmatory statement that we try to make is through a site visit. We use site visits to basically get an idea if we feel that the company is doing what we think it should be doing, and also to get an idea if we're correct in our theory that there's still a lot out there to find. This week we have planned a site visit to Manitoba to see a zinc project in the Flin Flon area. So the whole point of the site visit is to talk to the geologists, to talk to the geophysicists, to talk to the site staff and to find out in our own perspective can we match what they're saying and what they're depicting to what the deposits that are currently being mined in that district and that's the key. Calinex Mines was an interesting play for us that we purchased at PDAC and the reasons were pretty simple. We bought it because it was what we looked at in terms of cash and where it was valued, a good entry level. We liked the technical team and we liked the model for the VMS zinc rich deposit that we're looking for. We like zinc and so we wanted exposure to it on the exploration site and Calinex made sense. But the company recently released some results that the market found rather underwhelming. The stock took a hit, we took a hit, and so did many of our subscribers. So the issue right now going forward is do these results represent a fatal flaw in the model that we are looking for? Or does this project just require more exploration, more drilling because we're still at an early stage? And the only way to figure that out is to get to site and meet with the technical team. So that's why we're traveling to Flin Flon, Manitoba. Hey, Jim. Hi, Joe. How's well, it going? Good. Uh, we're just uh, ready to go to town and take a look at things. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, Great. Hope you have a good uh, visit. Look forward to it. Thanks for inviting me to Flin Flon. Flin Flon is a historic mining district. Hudson's Bay has been mining polymetallic ore, which is mostly copper and zinc, for about eight decades here. Kalinex's properties are about 30 kilometers away from this vast infrastructure that Hudson's Bay has created. This proximity is a key piece of the Kalinex investment thesis. You can see here the, uh, the zinc plant and concentrator over there and the vast amount of infrastructure really in the area. And then over here is the head frame for the 777, which really only has you know, a two, three year mine life left uh, before it's really all spent. So really our goal is to find the next uh, mine to really feed this infrastructure and the facilities out here in the community. Well, I mean, from what I understand, all of Hud Bay zinc comes from Manitoba. Well, they still are, are bringing the zinc here uh, to be processed. I think that the real opportunity is to find another kind of anchor flagship mine with a long mine life here to uh, feed the facilities here in Flint Flon. We're very close to proximity within, uh, call it 25 to 30 kilometers, whereas they're right now trucking ore actually 130 kilometers from the Reed Lake mine. So again, we're well within that, that distance or that range uh, to be able to meet the needs of this community. Before we get to site, I meet with the technical team and management to get a detailed presentation of what's actually happening at site. These detailed technical presentations that we do with uh, management are critical for us. They translate all this technical data into information that we can use prior to our site visit. So to find another one of these, like you're looking for another 777, you're looking for another Calinan, you're looking for Whatever, like wherever you want to it's be. It's a three-dimensional issue. Yeah, and but, you just but what do you, 
what are the keys? Big felsic package. And how big is this felsic package? Like how thick is this here? Oh, I don't know, it's several kilometers thick there. Whereas at the main mine, it's probably, I don't know, maybe get up 300 meters thick, 200, 200 300 meters. So we finished the first day, and it's a bit of a long day with the travel and the presentation. Um, and what I got out of it was that these guys, uh, especially Jim, knows a lot about volcanogenic massive sulfide deposits and especially about deposits in this area. The issue is, for me, is that the presentations and the PowerPoints don't really give you an idea how complicated these deposits are and how difficult they could be to find. People like to have the home run in one or two holes. This is not the way it works, and there's always uh, frustration. It's a matter of uh, understanding the patterns and being consistent. The fact is that they're really still at early stage, and so, um, you know, that drill hole that they hit of, of 10 meters at, uh, you know, 6% zinc, uh, about 2% copper and stuff like that. I mean, that was a great hole, but it, probably got ahead of itself with respect to, okay, now you don't hit a hole and they think, uh, the investing community thinks it's dead. But how folded, complicated, faulted uh, this deposit could be sort of uh, tells me that there's a lot more information to be had with more drilling to find a deposit of a, a decent size of 10 million tons of underground at 10% at, uh, zinc equivalent that could still be there at Pine Bay. You can succeed if you uh, have a bit of passion and understanding of these things and, uh, and a bit of good luck too. Uh, luck is always part of it. I think there's a lot of patterns here that are starting to make sense and uh, I'm optimistic that uh, we're going to uh, come up with something that's significant. Well, we're done for today and we're looking forward to tomorrow where we're going to look at some core and then try to put this all together. With the technical presentation out of the way, we're heading to the core shack. Going to the core shack and seeing the core is a crucial part of any site visit. So the core shack is a veritable library. Every piece of core tells a different story. And our job at Exploration Insights is to put those pieces together. Because in the end, the core is the truth. Nice road, good access, beautiful lakes, lots of infrastructure close by. Now we're gonna go check out the core. Here. Here Thank you, sir. Oh, it's like a disco in here. Okay, so I'm looking at this. What it, what it, I mean, I've got this huge, massive pyrotite mineralization. I've got what appears to be chalcopyrite stringing along it, and then goes into this finely bedded sequence. With sphalerite. With sphalerite. Wow. And you get the same thing in hole uh, 10, which we just completed uh, uh, the same package, the same, same style of uh, foot wall stringer zone, and same uh, hanging wall sphalerite stringers. So when we look at this core, we're looking at the hot part of the system. Why? Because we get the chalcopyrite and we're getting the pyrotite, especially in the cabin zone, the Pine Bay zone. So we're right up here in, Pine, in Baker Patton, which is this, but we're not seeing the pyrotite. In the cabin zone, we're over here, and we start seeing not only the high-grade copper, the 3.3 at 3.2%, but we're also getting the massive pyrotite. And then in Pine Bay, which might be a folded version coming over, we see again the pyrotype and again the chalcopyrite mineralization. So re repeatedly, we're seeing the heat sources. And what we're looking for, if we're looking for the zinc mineralization, is we want to be farther away. We want to be where it cools off. And so now we're seeing the massive zinc mineralization in the cabin zone. And this is the 10 point, this is part of the 10.3 meters of 13.1% zinc equivalent. There's not much lead in the system, as I pointed out earlier, because of uh, the age of this uh, greenstone belt.
but this is grading about 6% zinc by itself. And it's got good gold grades, almost uh, two grams, and it's sitting with about two ounces of silver. And still there's a bit of copper here, about 0.7% copper. So now what we're gonna be doing is seeing what they're gonna be drilling next. And so this program is at the tail end of the program. And so right now, they're gonna be testing this zone here. And to see not only if they hit the cabin bay VMS horizon, but if they can replicate this distal zinc massive sulfide mineralization that they hit in this hole that they extended from Placer. So let's go to the drill hole. Finally, we arrive at the drill rig. This hole will be the final hole of this current program at Pine Bay. We anticipate that drilling will continue again in July. I think we're uh, you know, roughly 900 meters down hole right now on the hole 24, uh, the final hole of our campaign. And, and uh, the idea with this hole is to pierce the cabin BMS. And as we remember, this drill hole is going from east to west. We're gonna drill it this way. And we're somewhere over here Still, we haven't intersected the cabin BMS. And we gotta remember, <clears throat> the cabin BMS is where we had distally the high-grade zinc mineralization, and now we're trying to hopefully hit some other kind of massive sulfide mineralization right now. Yeah, absolutely. This is the most exciting uh, part of the whole exploration process, in my opinion, because you can do all the geophysics, you can only do the ground thing you wanna do, where you're never gonna know what's down there until you actually drill test and put the hole in the ground. Okay, Max, I mean, uh, you're the CEO of Calinex. We've gotten, a, I, I guess, a better idea of what you're doing in the Pine Bay area and what you'll potentially do at the, in this newly acquired property. Can you give us an idea of your overall strategy, how, how this all fits? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the overall strategy of the organization is to be doing exploration in two prolific uh, VMS camps in North America and Canada, in the Flin Flon camp, as we've been experiencing the past couple days here, and in the Bathurst camp of uh, New Brunswick. And again, the strategy is very similar in both contexts, doing exploration, high-grade polymetallic deposits within close proximity infrastructure. As you're close to infrastructure, not only from power roads, you're actually close to active mine sites. Absolutely. So what that allows us to do is reduce the upfront uh, hurdles to making a deposit economic, as well as that upfront capital cost to take something into production is dramatically reduced. But, but the other thing, I guess, in terms of a critical tonnage, I, I, I'm gathering that you're looking for a critical tonnage that would make uh, your project work on a standalone basis. That's correct, yes. Okay, but uh, potentially, uh, you know, if you found something very high grade that was incrementally, uh, you know, uh, accretive for somebody that's already working in the district, your hurdle, I, I gather, is a lot less. That's right. It'd be absolutely a lot less because all the infrastructure is in place. It's just about getting that, uh, that ore to that facility to be processed. And your goal with, uh, with your assets, how far do you actually want to take them? Well, we want to make a substantial exploration here in Flin Flon and drill that out. And then I think that if that were to happen, we'd be naturally a suitor for a, 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 t a company that wants to take us over to really create a, a foot, foothold into Flin Flon for the foreseeable future. And we know that zinc market is rather buoyant. so. Have you noted that from the activity and full incoming calls? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the, the, the move that Zinc's had, you've also had investor appetite kind of increase in, in tandem. So without a doubt, that's been one of the strategies. It's one of the reasons we also moved to Bathurst was to go out there and, and we thought we could pick up some really great projects at the bottom of that particular cycle in the Zinc cycle early last year. Uh, we we're very fortunate to have done that. And, and now we're looking forward to really growing upon that. Great. Well, thanks for a great site visit to your Flynn Flock Thanks so properties. much for coming out and uh, seeing what we're up to. With the site visit over, we thank the technical team and management for giving us a good overview of the Pine Bay deposit. It's time for me to head back to Vancouver. Well, we finished our site visit to Flynn Flon to see Calnex Mines and their zinc project, Pine Bay. It was a great site visit. We saw a lot of material, a lot of technical data was presented. 
it, it seems that the deposit is a little bit more complicated than I thought it was, so it's going to take a lot more drilling. We're going to stick around and hold this story. So we'll see you back in Vancouver.